عليك عليك لا تقوم الساعة حتى يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود and you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are <laughs> Hello guys, nice to have you here. God bless you. Hope everybody is okay. Hello Abdul Halig. Hello Azuru, Philip, Peter the Wall, Hafsa Idasi. Princess Rainbow, Phil Herrera, Christian Prince. Oh, this is a different Christian Prince. Okay. TM Chris Pauls, Phoebe, Carolina. Everybody who just joined in, it's you're a Muslim. I know you're a coward Muslim who will never call us. I welcome you too to our live show. Hopefully, today you'll learn something as a Muslim. The Iron Sheikh, Lula, Carol. A Santuyolo, Yolanda or Yolandi, Asmer Pardosi, Jesus loves with no limits. Everybody who just joined in, God bless you, God bless your families. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching our live shows. I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope you're uh, healthy and safe. So <clears throat> let us start today's live show. I hope you. Uh, took out your umbrellas because you know there was a spitting cobra in the shape of Mimi Hijab who was making your screen uh, wet. So I hope you have a good umbrella to cover up all the spitting. Uh, I mean the poison of Mimi Hijab when he spits. Before we start today's live show guys and especially the topic of today is who is Allah when we ask Muslim who is Allah you know they they can't directly answer us who is Allah they didn't see uh, Allah Muhammad didn't see Allah who is Allah nobody knows in Islam when you ask them who is Allah they can't explain who Allah is they will give you 99 names of Allah but when you ask them who is Allah they can't answer they have no personal connection with Allah Muhammad himself had no connection with Allah because everything was happening through so-called Jibreel but we know Jibreel was nothing but a demon who attacked Muhammad in that cave. In cave, Hira, Hira, Hira. Let me squeeze you. Iqra, iq. Anyway, so guys, let us start today's live show. But pray with me first so we can be guided through today's live show. In the name of our Lord and Savior, pray with me. God, please bless our audience today and give us the courage and wisdom to overcome lies, taqiyya and deception. Enfold us all in your arms, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we might reflect your light within this dark world, and that we speak your word with boldness and without any shame, so you can draw the poor victims of this man-made cult, like the Muslims, to your feet, Lord. Lord, Please loosen my tongue today to speak the truth to our audience without any error or falsehood. Please, Lord. Holy God, give us the courage to do whatever needs to be done. We ask this through your beloved and holy Son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, guys, today on this live show, we will have the opportunity to talk about this important topic. Who is Allah? Who is this Allah in Islam? Hopefully, we will have some Muslims who will call us live. Since we are live, our Skype is open. Please call us and tell us who Allah is. That's, maybe you can answer our question. Do you have any idea? You Muslims, I'm talking to you. Do you have any idea who Allah is? If you have any idea, if you call yourself a Muslim who knows about his Allah, or maybe you're an Imam or an Ustaz, call me. We are live. All right? 
So my Skype ID is D Rob Christian. Again, D Rob Christian without separation. My Skype is open. So we will have hopefully during today's today's live show, we'll have hopefully a nice and respectful discussion with a knowledgeable Muslim. So who is Allah? That's today's topic. Who is Allah? If we go to the Quran, guys, if we go to the Quran in Surah at Tawbah, Surah of the Sword or Surah of Al Qital, the chapter of fighting, the chapter of the sword, that's the other nicknames for this chapter, they call it Surah at Tawbah, which means repentance. It has nothing to do with repentance, actually. It's all about fighting and killing and attacking the Jews and the Christians and whatnot. But anyway, Muslims, let it go. Let it go, brother. Let it go. So if you go to chapter 9, ayah 31, it says they have taken their priests, right? Their priests and their monks for lords besides Allah. There's nothing called God here. It's Allah. That's the name of their God. Because Ilah means God and Allah is the name of the Ilah, right? Ilah in Arabic means God. So this is a false translation because it says Allah, not Ilah. And Wa al Messiah. So here, the Quran or the writer of the Quran, who knows who this one is? Maybe it's Muhammad, maybe it's Christ, who knows? Allahu Alam. So it says, the Christians have taken their priests and monks as lords beside Allah instead of Allah wa al masih what so not are you only lying about the Christians because we don't worship uh, our monks and priests as gods so this is a lie without any shame here the quran is lying without any shame right here the quran is lying without any shame because we don't worship our peace and monks so stop lying you filthy book of satan <laughs> filthy liars man and not only that here we see the shirk right here this is shirk here the quran is associating allah Sorry, Al Masih, the Christ with Allah. Right? The Christ with Allah. So, here, who is the Lord's according to this ayah? Who are the Arbaban instead of Allah and Masih? So, the Lord's, the gods, are Allah and then Masih. Right? The gods, according to this ayah, is Allah, the moon idol, and Al Masih. The Messiah. So this is nothing but shirk, 100% shirk, right? Which means associating a partner with Allah. So why is the Quran associating Al Masih with Allah? Is there any Muslim who maybe can answer this question for us? Why is the Quran here lying about the Christians? And not only lying, but also telling everybody that the real gods should be Allah and the Messiah. Do you have any Muslim who can answer this question for us? Why is the Quran lying about the Christians? And why is the Quran associating partners with Allah? Bam! Maybe a Muslim who is watching can answer this question uh, for us. Do we have any Muslim who can answer this question for us? My Skype is open. My Skype is open. D. Rob Christian. Call me. See? I'm live. Do you see it? Don't say you're lying. <laughs> so if you have any knowledge in you and you call yourself a man, call me. Right? So why are you Muslims attacking the Christians? 
saying, you are mushrikun, you associate partners with God. But the Quran itself in chapter 9, ayah 31, is associating al-Masih with Allah. So why are you such hypocrites, Muslims? First look in your own Quran, attack your own Quran, then try to come uh, to us, right? Damien Kerr, in Kerr, listen, your parents are simply not saying, you, you didn't pay attention to your parents because, I mean, I can ask you, damn, damn, I can ask you to pray for me. Does that mean I'm worshipping you? Yeah, you, you, damn in clear. When I ask you to pray for me, when you pray, you pray to God. But when I ask you to pray for me so that God can bless me and maybe heal me, does that mean I'm worshipping you? I mean, come on, why, why are you trying to, to, what, what are you doing here, man? Do you, have you any, any clue what you're saying? So if when you ask someone, when you ask someone to pray for you, does that mean you're worshipping that person? You know, these Christians, man, some Christians, really? Really? I mean, really? Anyway. And I'm not attacking you personally, but you know, you really need to think before you write something. When I ask our brother Philip or Asmar or Jason Palmer in the chat, please pray for, uh, for me. Pray for me so I can be healed because maybe I'm sick. Does that mean I'm worshipping those people? No. Well, your parents, if they did that, then they are not real Christians. A true Christian only worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't worship anyone. What's wrong with you? We only worship God. Like seriously, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, to be honest, uh, to be honest, this is not my topic of today. Why are you changing my topic? At least have respect when you come to our uh, live shows. Have respect. Stay on top. Don't be like the Muslims. We know the Muslims always jump from topic to topic. Why are you helping them? Don't, don't, don't get me mad this, this morning, man. I just woke up. Please bear with me, man. Anyway, <clears throat> let us show you the, the shirk number two, shirk number two in the Quran, from chapter 48, ayah 9. لِتُؤْمِنِ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُهُ وَتُوَقِّرُهُ وَتُسَبِّحُهُ بُكْرَةً وَاصِيلًا When I went to school, guys, in the Middle East, I cannot say which country I'm from, but when I went to, to school in the Middle East, and I started to learn from my teachers, the basic Arabic grammar rules, they told me when you have a sentence like this, I am very relaxed, Carolina. I am relaxed. You know, when you look in the dictionary uh, and you search for the word relaxed, uh, you'll find my name there. But I can simply cannot cope up with people who come to destroy our topic of today who and say something that has nothing to do with my topic today and have no clue what, what, what the Christianity is all about. And no, Catholics, they don't worship monks and priests. I'm, I'm not a Catholic, guys. I'm a Biblicist. I'm a Christian who only follows the Bible. What the Bible says. Right? I'm not a follower of any don, don, denomination or whatever you want to call it. I don't care about it. And I don't like to see Christians who come and cause division. In my live show you want to do that maybe you should visit other live shows or go to other youtube videos that love to attack catholics that love attack the protestants the, the orthodox that this is not that kind of show we're not here for division you know islam is already satanic enough you want to help islam to infiltrate christianity and cause division among your brothers and sisters i don't like that Exactly, Francis. So, I don't follow any tradition. I only follow what my Christ Christian Bible says. What my Bible says. Right? 
I don't follow any denomination because denominations are nothing but divisions. I don't like to follow tradition of men. So, what is this ayah talking about? Like I said, guys, please focus with me. According to this ayah, you have to believe in Allah and His Rasul. Okay. But not only that, you have to assist Muhammad in battle, the Rasul. You have to respect and honor the Rasul. And you have to glorify who? The Rasul, the messenger. Every morning and evening. Like I said, in the Middle East, they teach us in basic Arabic grammar rules. The last person mentioned, in this case, the Rasul, is the last person mentioned. All the words that come after the last person are for the last person and the last person alone. So you have to, like I said, you have to assist Muhammad in battle as a Muslim. You have to respect and honor Muhammad and you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening. Tasbih, glorification of Muhammad. So who are now the gods in Islam? According to chapter 9, 31, chapter 9, ayah 31, and chapter 80, 48, sorry, 48, ayah 9, the gods are Allah, Al-Masih, and Muhammad. Bam! So we have at least three gods. Oh, um, yeah, okay. You get the idea. Allah plus Al Masih plus Muhammad. Those are the gods. Bam! <clears throat> Do you have any Muslim? Yeah, guys, if you want to support us through uh, our work through Patreon, my you can find me as Rob Christian also in Patreon. So if you want to help us on a monthly basis and you want to support us, you can find me as Rob Christian on Patreon. Or just patreon.com slash Rob Christian. Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to refute what I just said? Is there any Muslim watching? We have at least 126 people watching. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. There are no Muslims watching. Maybe they will join later. Who knows? Allahu Akbar. What about the pre Islamic goddesses? Uh -huh. Who are those? The pre Islamic goddesses, Allah Tal Uzza Wal Manat, that you could find in the pre Islamic Kaaba in Mecca, together with the rest of the 359 idols. So, They used to be the daughters of Allah, the moon idol. They had wings. They could fly. They were bird idols, right? They could fly and take the prayers of the pagan of Quraysh, the pagan Meccans. They could fly to Allah, the moon idol. All the way to Allah. And deliver the prayers of the pagans to the supreme moon idol, Allah. And Allah was married to the son, Akbar. So you had Allah and Akbar, the son, his wife, the son. So the moon idol and the son, Akbar. And they had three daughters, Allah, al Uzza, Wal Manad, the third. Okay, I see Georgia, that's what you mean. Okay. Well, I put it on Twitter, I put it on Facebook. So if you want to. See my notifications, you can also get it from Facebook. I put it also on Twitter, so you can follow me on, tw on Twitter. Let me give you my Twitter account too. I always make sure to put them there too. So you'll get a notification or whatever you want to call it. 
So this is my Twitter account. Please follow me. So you'll get a notification. So Allah, the sun and his three bird idols. If we go to a tafsir for a ayah of the Quran, chapter two, 22, Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22 of the Quran, ayah 52, and we go to the tafsir of Al-Wahidi in his very famous collection of tafsir called Asbab al nuzul the reason why an ayah comes down, the reason why an ayah comes down in his tafsir for the Quran, for chapter 22, ayah 52, we can read that Muhammad, you know, he was with his people, the pagans, you know, because the Quraysh used to be his tribe. So he was there with the Quraysh, right, one day. One day he said, in one of the congreg congregations of the Quraysh, which attracted a huge number, so a lot of people were there, right, at that time, and Muhammad was there with the pagans, the pagan Quraysh, his own tribe were pagans, and Muhammad was a nice pagan too, right, he used to worship these idols, and he wished that his Allah would not reveal on that day anything that might repel them from him, so Muhammad was saying, please Allah, Allah, don't send me anything that the pagan of Quraysh will reject me, please Allah, don't do it, Allah didn't listen anyway. <laughs> Allah <laughs> didn't listen and he started to reveal Surah Al-Najm, chapter 53. Surah Al-Najm, he started to reveal it, right? By the star, when it's so Allah is swearing by the star. Surah chapter 53. Then the Messenger of Allah recited this Surah, but when he reached have you thought upon Allah al Uzza and Manat? So let me go there, guys. Let me go to that surah to explain to you for the people who didn't see this before. If we go to the same chapter, guys, this is chapter 53, Surah Al Najm. Do you see the star? Are you with me, guys? If you go there, so Muhammad started reading and he started reading and he continued with this. Have you considered? Allah al Uzza and Manad the other, the third of the pagan deities. Then look what happens immediately after this selected verse, after 20, after ayah 20. What, did, what happened, guys? When he reached this, then the devil. So when Muhammad reached ayah 20 of this chapter, then the devil. Guys, are you with me? This is important. The devil intervened. The devil started to put on the tongue of Muhammad what he secretly had wished and hoped for and said, This is the devil speaking, guys. So the devil gave the following verse to Muhammad. These are the mighty cranes. What, what are the mighty cranes? The bird idols. Allat al Uzza wal Manat. Right? These are the Gharaniq. Those are the, the bird idols, the cranes. Cranes are bird idols, guys, with those long legs, right? So the bird idols, the cranes, Allat al Uzza wal Manat, they are mighty. And their intercession is hopeful. So Muhammad gave this to the Quraysh and they heard this. Do you see it? So Muhammad, he delivered the satanic verses. So this, these words that you see here highlighted, guys. Do you see it? They came after, immediately after Ayah 20. So here, here. They used to be here in the, in, in, in the Quran. Immediately after Ayah 20. Do you see it? You see it? So it's here between 20 and 21. This highlighted part used to be. So when the Quraysh heard the beautiful words about their bird idols, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, the third, they were really pleased with Muhammad. Bam! So Muhammad became the messenger of the devil. He became the apostle of the devil. 
Do you see it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So then, what happened next, guys? Everyone became a mushrik, including Muhammad. Why? Because here, here's why. The messenger of Allah, everyone became a pagan immediately after that. Muhammad became a pagan. And he kept uh, reciting until he finished the entire surah. So after he gave the satanic verses, guys, here after the 20, then it continued all the way down. After he finished, he carried on reciting until the end of the surah and then started to bow down to the idols of Mecca. Muhammad started to bow down to the idols of Mecca. He became a nice mushrik pagan boy. Yes. All the Muslims became pagans, mushrikeen, fillah. They started to associate partners with Allah. In this case, Allah al uzza wal manat, the third. Right? And they also bowed down, act of worship, prostration. Right? So they prostrated. All the Muslims and all the idolaters did that. Everyone started to prostrate. Do you see it? Everyone, all those who were present. So everyone at that very moment became a nice mushrik. All of them became pagans. Do you see it? No one left. No one left there when Muhammad was there. No one was left. All of them became pagans. Is there any Muslim who dares to challenge me on this topic? Is there any Muslim who dares to challenge me on this topic? Shirk alert, exactly. Well, Carolina, he wanted, actually Muhammad, he wanted his tribe, his family to become Muslims. But, you know, he, he was there, he tried to reconcile with them, you know. But the devil came in between. Yes. The devil came in between and he gave him the, the satanic verses. Do you see it? So the devil was much stronger than Allah. Allah was silent. And Muhammad started to recite the satanic ayahs, the satanic verses. True story. Yes, this is a historical event that happened in, in the life of Muhammad, guys. This is a true story in the life of Muhammad. Muhammad became a nice pagan boy. All the Muslims who were there at that moment, they became pagans and they started to bow down and prostrate in front of the bird idols. Yeah, he missed bowing down to these grains. Yeah. And then if you continue reading, guys, all the way down, Jibreel, that evening, so couple hours later, <laughs> Jibreel came to spank Muhammad. Yes, Jibreel came to spank Momo, right? Molly, call him what you want to call him. And he started to spank Muhammad and said, oh, oh, what have you done? Jibreel said, what have you done, Muhammad? What have you done, Muhammad? Ya Jaban ibn Jaman, ya Anima. Network, you are the Jaban ibn Jaban because you will never ever call me. Yeah, Jaban ibn Jaban, you coward son of a coward. You're a Muslim, right? Are you a man? If you call yourself a man, call me. My Skype is open, man. Call me. Call me on the Arab Christian. That's my Skype ID. Call me, yeah, Jaban ibn Jaban. Before you call me a coward, call me and show us that you are not a coward. I'm here, I'm live. Why? How dare you to call me a coward, you son of a coward? <laughs> you see, you see this, you see these uh, hypocrites, man? You see these hypocrites? You see these hypocrites? Who are you calling a coward, you son of a coward? Yeah, 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 Munafiq, Ibn Munafiq, like your prophet. So Muhammad, he bowed down and he prostrated to Allah al uzza wal manad and he delivered the satanic verses to to pagans, to the Quraysh pagans. And he said, These are the mighty cranes, the bird idols, Allah al-Uzza wal-Manat. 
and their intercession is hoped for. Why their intercession is hoped for, guys? For the people who just joined? Because they were birds. They could fly, right? They were birds. They had wings and they could fly and they delivered the, sorry, the prayers of the pagan Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad. They delivered the prayers all the way to Allah, the moon idol. Right? So his daughters, Allah Ta'ala wa Manat, could fly and deliver the prayers and they were interceding. Bird girls, yeah, bird idols. Right? And they flew all the way to Allah and his wife, the son. Yeah, Jaban, you see the guy became silent. He came to call me a coward. English, Abdul, even English. English, English. My audience are English speakers. Why are you typing Arabic, you donkey? Yeah, Jaban ibn Jaban, call me. Yeah, Gizab ibn Gizab, call me. You coward son of a coward. You see, you're not even a man. You're a, you're, you're a girl, man. Real men don't text. Real men call us to refute us. So as you see guys, Muhammad was a nice pagan mushrik boy. And all the Muslims became mushrik and bowed down and prostrated. They did sujood for Allah Tal Uzza wal Mat. Right? Those were in Arabic the satanic verses. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes, yes, brother. Muhammad brother became a mushrik boy, brother? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. See it? Proof is in front of you. This is not my tafsir. This is Asbab al Nuzul by Al Wahidi. For chapter two, 22, ayah 52. See it? Let me give you the link, guys. Bookmark it, save it. Bookmark it and save it. You see, so here we destroyed Muhammad, showed you that he's a pagan mushrik boy, the prophet of Islam. He was a nice pagan boy and he bowed down and did sujood. BAM! Right? He became a nice pagan boy. If you continue guys, Allah, El, we are going to talk about this later guys. Remember the word El, El, the modern name or the modern meaning of El is the, right? This is the modern one. The, right? The modern meaning. The modern meaning, it means the, the la. That's the pagan moon idol of the Muslims. And we showed you that, Muh uh, that Muhammad bowed down to his daughters, Allah Ta'ala Uzza wa Manat, right? The pagan moon idol, Allah. Other names for this fake dead pagan moon idol are Hubal, Sin, Ya Sin, right? You can find it also in the Quran. Baal, etc., etc. He has many names. And we know this is Satan. Satan has many names through all history. Baal, Sin, Hubal, a lot of names for Satan. Right? Samir Kosa, Ya Kosa. I know you're a Kosa, right? You're, you're not even a man. If you dare call me, I don't debate in Arabic because my audience are non-Arabic speaking people. Call me, I know you know English, call me, we'll debate in English. Why should I debate you in Arabic when my audience are not Arab speaker? What's the point, Abdul? So call me, my Skype is open. The Arab Christian, call me. Don't look for excuses. If my audience were not Arabs, then we could have debated in Arabic. So don't look for excuses, don't be a coward, don't be a Jaban, call me and we will debate right here, right now. And Kosa guys, you know what Kosa means? That's a Zucchini. Kosa in Arabic means Zucchini. And when a man in, Ara in the Arab world, when a man cannot have kids, he's imp impotent. We call him a Kosa. So this guy is an impotent coward, Abdul. You're not even a man. Why are you calling yourself Kosa, man? Anyway. Yeah, Kosa. Mr. Impotent. Call me, call me. 
So, if we continue, uh, this guy will not come. Yeah, Mr. Zucchini will not call. The living holy God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the Holy Bible, guys, pay attention. We, his name is Jehovah or Yahweh, right? Yahweh or Jehovah, the I am. So, why are you Muslims always trying your best to tell us that Allah is the same God? Okay, I will give you a thousand dollars, Muslims, and my audience will add thousand dollar more if you can show me the name of our holy God in your Quran if you want to say that Allah is the same God of the Jews and the Christians you coward debate me in Arabic I will call you now no I'm not going to debate you in Arabic Abdul I will hang up on you because my audience are non-Arabic speakers so what's the point Shuhad al yeah? Why you want to debate me in Arabic? Well, nobody can see you. You, you want to debate me because you don't want to get exposed, right? So people won't see and understand what we're talking about. You, I'm so scared, man. I'm so scared. Call me. If, and if you're not a coward, we'll debate in English. Why would I want to debate in Arabic? Ya donkey ibn donkey. Ya hamar ibn hamar. Do you have, is there any logic in you? Kun zelame, kun zelame. Stop calling yourself Zucchini, you impotent Abdul. Change your name at least. You want to spank me in Arabic? Oh, I'm so scared. You want to spank me in Arabic? Why not in English? Clearly you know English, right? <laughs> guys, he came, to, he came to waste my time. Forget it. Forget about him, guys. Let us continue. He's a coward. He's a munafiq. He's, a, he's, he's nothing but a pagan like his fake prophet, the... Apostle of Satan, the agent of Satan, Muhammad, he came to waste our time. So, as you see, Allah will never ever be our holy living God. Allah is a dead, fake moon idol. And he has many names because Satan is a shapeshifter and he has many names and he has many shapes. And even if you go to the hadith, if you go to Sayyid al-Bukhari, Allah can shapeshift guys like Satan. Allah can shapeshift like Satan. Right? Let us continue, guys. Ignore the Abdul. Ignore him. He will never call me. Ilah, as we mentioned, guys, Ilah means God. Elohim means God. It's the generic name for God. Even pagan gods can be called Ilah or Elohim or El, you see? And you need to focus on the word El. You remember when I told you? El is the classical meaning for God. But during the centuries, the word L got a new modern meaning and became V, right? V, La, right? The moon idol, La. So L, guys, means God. Aloho in Aramaic means God. Different dialect for the Aramaic. It depends if you're a Western speaker of the Aramaic or a Eastern speaker. It depends on your dialect. We call him Aloho. Some people will call him Allah in, in the Arabic. The Assyrians. So this means God, right? Ilahi, Elahi, Eloheinu means my God. This is Hebrew, this is Aramaic, this is Arabic, my God. So still the generic name, right? The generic na name for the, na the words, basically the generic word for God, right? But Allah, guys, Allah, as you see, are you paying attention, guys? Yeah, Alahi or Ilahi means my God. So the generic word for God. Simply God, right? God. But Allah is the name. Did you catch it? It's the name of the Islamic moon idol. Bam! So you Muslims, why are you such hypocrites when you say Allah means God? You filthy liars. Ya Kosa ibn Kosa. Ya Kosa, Mr. Impotent, son of an impotent. Why are you such liars when you say Allah, Allah means God? No, that's the name of your God, you filthy liars. Shame on you. Yeah, this is facts, exactly. Shame on you for lying to people who don't know about these things. Guys, 
Guys, if we are almost in 2020. Why are you still getting fooled by these Mohammedans, these Satan worshippers, these Muslims? Why are you still getting fooled by them? Wake up, man! Take notes! Make a screenshot! Can you make a screenshot out of this? If you have a smartphone, take a screenshot and understand when they come to you, they say Allah means God, spank them with the facts. Make a screenshot, guys. Come on, here, the screen is in front of you. Take a screenshot. Take a snapshot. Spank them. Like I'm spanking them now. Right here, right now. Live. And no Muslim dares to call me. We are live, man. My Skype is open. Call me, Abdul. Don't be ashamed of your moon idol. Call me. Take a screenshot, guys. And take a screenshot of this one too. Use them. Help me to help you in your debates with Muslims, guys. Don't be lazy, guys. Make a screenshot of this one too. Okay, let me continue. I hope you took screenshots. Let me continue. Are you with me, guys? Are you with me? We're going to bring the hammer down on Allah, the illiterate Allah. Who? The illiterate. And you will see in a couple of seconds why we are calling him illiterate. Allah is illiterate like his prophet. I kid you not. Allah is illiterate like his prophet. He cannot read and write. Bunch of cowards. Ya Samir. Ya Samir Kosa. Ya Zucchini. Mr. Zucchini. Mr. Impotent Guy. You are a coward. You are a son of a coward. You are a Jaban Ibn Jaban. You will never ever be a man in your life. Your own Prophet and the Sahaba will be ashamed of you. Your Prophet and the Sahaba, the companions of your Prophet, they are ashamed of you. You call yourself a Muslim. You can't even defend Islam from us. We are spanking Islam. We are spanking your fake Prophet and fake dead moon idol. And you cannot do anything about it. Kalb, inta, inta kalb ibn al kalb, ya, ya Hamar ibn Hamar. Who are you calling a kalb, ya Hamar ibn Hamar? He's insulting me now in Arabic, guys. He, he's calling me a dog. Anyway. Guys, if we go to the very first chapter, the very first ayah, do you see it? This is chapter one, ayah one. Do you see it? We're going to show you guys that Muhammad and Allah, they are both illiterate. Both of them are ummiyun. Allah plus his prophet are both illiterate. Meaning ummiyun, plural. They are both ummiyun, and here is why. If we start reading from the very first word, bism, there is nothing called bism. Bism. It's bism, nothing bism. There is nothing in the Arabic called bism. It's bism. So here, Muhammad and Allah are showing their illiteracy here in the very first word. And here's the proof. If we go to chapter 69, guys, chapter 69. Chapter 69, Ayah 52, let me show you. You will see it written like this, with an Aleph. Do you see the Aleph? Here the Aleph is missing. Guys, are you paying attention? Take, take a snapshot. Take a snapshot, guys. Right here, right now. Take a screenshot. I hope you made a screenshot. Are you done, guys? You took a screenshot? Okay. So we're going to show you from Chapter 69, Ayah 52, that Allah was illiterate. In the very beginning of his Quran, in chapter 1, he's an illiterate. Let me prove it to you. 69, ayah 52. Let us go there. 69, ayah 52. Scroll down. Down, down, down. The, to the last ayah. You see the problem here? Do you see it? Guys, do you see it? Do you see the elephant here? Here, the Aleph is missing, right? Here, the Aleph is missing. B-ism. But here, you see the Aleph. 
right? You see it? The A, B ism. So your Allah, Mr. Zucchini, your Allah is an illiterate like your prophet. This is false. This is incorrect. Here the alif is missing. But here, as you see, this is the correct way to write B ism. So Allah, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. Here you are making a huge error. But in chapter 69, in the last ayah, ayah 52, you are writing it the correct way. Allah, if he went to do his Arabic exams, he would fail his Arabic exams. Yes, yes, brother. Yes, brother, Allah would fail his Arabic exams. Yeah, Mr. Zucchini, why are you silent now, Mr. Zucchini? Mr. Zucchini, Ya Kosa Ibn Kosa. I challenge you to call me right here, right now, Ya Mr. Kosa, Zucchini, Zucchini boy. Brother, yes, brother, why Allah is illiterate, brother? Allahu A'lam, brother. Allahu A'lam, brother. Allah is illiterate, brother. What can we do? Like his prophet Abdullah, right? The son of Abdullah, he was uh, illiterate and his Allah is illiterate. You see it? So Allah, in, in his first chapter, <laughs> in his first ayah, he already makes mistakes. What about the rest of the words? What about the names of Allah? When we ask Muslims, how many names has Allah? How many names Allah has? How many names does he, does he got? He, they will say 99. 99 names, right? By the way, let me tell you a small secret. Guys, you don't get, get it from Rob Christian. You didn't hear it from Rob Christian. There are no 99 names in the Quran. What did you say, Rob Christian? Yes, I challenge any Muslim. I challenge any Muslim to show me all the 99 names in the Quran. What about that? Is that a good challenge? I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the 99 names of Allah in the Quran. Is that a challenge? Is that a fair challenge, guys? I will give you a thousand dollars if you can show me all the 99 names of Allah in the Quran. Any Abdul? So there are no 99 names of Allah. A lot of them are missing. Yes, brother. A lot of the names are missing. More than 20 names are missing in the Quran. Yes, more than 20 names of Allah are missing in the Quran. Yes, really. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. And Georgia, look, she's generous. She's giving a thousand on top of it. Mr. Abdul Halik is adding two thousand. So you'll have four thousand dollars. Any Muslim is up for the challenge. Yeah, Ace, you tell me. Ace, Carol, you tell me how they got the 19 enemies. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> they, I don't know. Where do you get the 19 enemies of Allah from, guys? You can't show us from the Quran. What's left? Hello, Allah. Can you tell us who you are? I can see it in your eyes. Guys, hide all the mirrors. They will break from my beautiful voice. I know, my voice is beautiful when I sing. Especially when I'm under the shower. Last time I had to replace all the mirrors in my house, man. That was really an expensive job. But what can we do? It's because of my beautiful singing voice. Anyway, don't dare to say, you, Rob Christian, you have an ugly voice. I will hunt you down for eternity. Anyway, guys, what about a rahman What about a rahman what about one of the so-called 99 names that we cannot find in the Quran? What about his name? Hey, Tippi Bear, God bless you. Thank you for your support, sister, through donations. God bless you, sister, and your family in this holy month. So what about the Rahman, guys? Did Allah write the Rahman correctly? Certainly not. He again. We are still in the same chapter, guys. Same ayah. This is the first ayah of the Quran. You see, number one. Allah already made a huge error with Bism, as we showed you. You took a screenshot and he made a huge error with Ar Rahman. Let me show you. This is written in the Quran like this 
as you see in front of you. Ar-Rahman. But the correct way to write it, it's Al-Rahman. If you want to read it like this, it says Ar-Rahman. What? Yes, Al-Rahman. So it's written in the Quran like this, but it should be written like this. So Allah cannot even write his name correctly, man. What's wrong with this Allah, man? This illiterate Allah. Is it Al-Rahman or Ar-Rahman? So they started, guys, if, you, if we go back, to fix the issue, they put this baby Aleph here on top. Do you see it? The baby Aleph, do you see it? This is not even a letter, guys. They fixed the Quran in the late 9th century. When we ask the Muslims, when was the Uthmanic Quran, Quran written? They will say in the 7th century. Okay, pro good. But in the late 9th century, in the beginning of the 10th century, they started to put these, these things in the Arabic text. We see the dots, the vowels, all kinds of things they started to add. So they started to corrupt the Quran with their own hands. And they put this baby letter. Oh, it's not even a letter. It's not fully grown yet. <laughs> it didn't eat his vitamins, vitamin D's, uh, D yet. To fully grown and become a fully grown elif like this so they put a small baby thing here on top to fix the mistakes in the quran <laughs> so allah cannot even write his name correctly uh oh what about the upfalling eyes what about the upfalling eyes so here again allah is writing in mistake incorrectly a rahman they fix it again with a, a baby elif here on top what about this word what about this word maliki yawmiddin here i'm going to show you the deception 101 here the writer of this website quranwow.com is you doing uh taqiyya guys of course it's corrupted so here here guys you see uh, anima network you are a, he's saying he's calling me a big illiterate let me read what he's saying quote unquote you are a big illiterate how would you write abdul rahman would you write it abdul rahman yes with an alif and we showed you that your allah cannot write arabic correct allah needs to, to go back to school it should be written like this right so you're a coward, you will never call me. What about Al Malik? Maliki Yomiddin. If we go to Quran.com, guys, let me show you. Let me show you the deception. This is Quran.com, chapter 1, ayah 3. Do you see it? This is Quran.com. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And let us go to the next verse. You see, they put a baby elephant on top. Here, we found another mistake. I'm trying to make it bigger for you to see. Now compare this, guys. Compare this word with this word. If you don't know Arabic, I'll help you. Quran.com, guys. The Quran.com, and here you'll see the deception, fixing the Quran of Allah. The Muslims trying to fix the Quran of Allah. On Quran.com, it's written like this. Malik, Malik, Yawm din Malik, do you hear? Malik, Yawm din and On Quranwow.com, Quranwow.com, it's written with an alif. Do you see it? Here's the alif. Here, no alif. Here, an alif. So if we do a nice screenshot and let me help you, I made screenshots like this. Take a screenshot, guys. Do it now. You will see that the elif is missing here. So they fixed it with a baby elif again. <laughs> so QuranWow.com is doing taqiyya. The QuranWow.com website is doing taqiyya deception. Deception 101 from different websites. The Muslims on this website are correcting the Quran of Allah with their own hands. Because there's nothing called Milik. It's Maliki Yawmuddin. Not Milik Yawmuddin. So the Aleph is missing. Do you see it? Take a screenshot. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. So again, we need to ask Allah to go back to school and learn Arabic. Rob, you're a fraud. You're a money collector. Yeah, right, Abdul. I challenge you to call me to refute me on this. You donkey, ya zucchini boy. I'm, a, I, I'm after the money, right? Guys, did you hear it? I'm after the money. I am the collector of money. Did you hear it? It's all about the money, guys. It's not about the truth. Right? It's, we don't care. We Christians, we don't care about the truth. This is why we're showing you and spanking uh, in front of you Allah and his, and his fake prophet, the moon idol, who cannot even write Arabic correctly. We're about the money, guys. Did you hear it? Finally, Rob Christian is exposed. I'm doing this for the money. I'm spending, guys, every week, I'm spending hours and hours and hours to show you the, fa the true face of Islam, the lies and taqiyah and deception in Islam, and to spank Muhammad, and I'm doing this for money, guys. Yeah, with $2, you can buy a new house for Guys, have you ever seen me ask for money? Yeah, Islam is dying and they cannot do anything about it. They are bankrupt. Thank you for the donations, God. God bless you. God bless your families. Islam is truly dying. And we are only left with zucchini boys, with Kosa boys, with zucchini boys who cannot defend Islam. Because they know Islam is corrupted and the Quran of Allah is corrupted by Muslim hands and the proof is in front of you. Bam! Take a screenshot, guys. So, as you see, guys, as you see, here, the writer of this website or the, the, the guy who created this website, QuranWow.com, put the alif in between and here on Quran.com, not QuranWow.com, but Quran.com, you see, let me make it a little bit smaller. You see there's an elf missing and they tried to fix it with a baby elf. Do you see it? This is not even a letter. This is, you know, that's what it is. They put this on top of it, this fart, this baby fart elf here on top. To fix the mistakes of Allah. You see how important it is to know Arabic guys, to expose the illiteracy of Allah himself in the Quran. Take out the zucchini boy, boy, take out the zucchini and call me. Take out your zucchini from uh, wherever you put it and call me. So we showed you Allah cannot write one of his 99 names, Ar-Rahman, correctly. And he cannot write his other one of his 99 names from the Quran correctly. We are going to continue because Muslims are cowards. They won't call us. And we showed you that even the first word of the Quran is written incorrectly. It should be like this. Let me continue. If you go to the Hadith, guys, we go to Jama'at Tirmidhi. Jama'at Tirmidhi in a Sahih Hadith. Hadith number 1907. Let me give you the link. Guys, please bookmark, save whatever you can to learn about who Allah is going to be in Islam. Because Muslims cannot answer us. So we have to do our own research about who Allah is. Right? So if you go to the Quran, uh, sorry, or to the Hadith, and we try to understand what is said here, it says someone complained of an illness. So Abdul Rahman bin visited him. So a guy visited him because of his illness. He said the best of you and the most apt to maintain good relation, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I heard the messenger. So he heard the Sahabi heard the messenger saying, Allah most blessed and most high said, I am Allah. So Allah is saying, I am Allah. And I am a Rahman. Well, Allah cannot even write the Rahman correctly, right? We showed you. You, you claim to be a Rahman, but you can e not even write a Rahman correctly. You are an illiterate Allah. You are an illiterate false moon idol. You cannot write your name correctly. You missed the Alif. 
Ar-Rahman. So he wrote Ar-Rahman instead of Ar-Rahman. And then Allah continues, he says, I created Ar-Rahim, the womb, and named it after my name. So according to Allah, guys, he created Ar-Rahim, the womb, right? And named it after my name. So Allah named the womb of a woman after his name. That's where, where it comes from. Did you catch it, guys? Are you with me? Did you catch what Allah is saying here, guys, according to Muhammad? So Allah is saying one of 99 names that we cannot find in the Quran, Ar-Rahman. He created the womb and he named it after Ar-Rahman. Rahim or Rahim, Bayt Ar-Rahim, the womb, Bayt Ar-Rahim, the womb, the house of the womb, basically Bayt Ar-Rahim, comes from Ar-Rahman. Okay, I see. But if we go to the Hebrew, guys, let me show you that Muhammad stole this word from the, from the Hebrew language, from the Jews of Medina. Muhammad stole this word from the Jews of Medina. What? What did you say, Rob Christian? Yes, you heard it correctly. Speaking from Kaif, Hira, Hira. Muhammad stole the word Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, from the Jews. Uh -huh. Yes, like always, always stealing from the Jews. This word, and I think uh, Abdul Halik, you know Hebrew. This word means Rachamim or Rach. Yeah, I sorry if I'm butchering the the transliteration. Rachamim, Rachamim means mercy, compassion, womb. Do, do you understand what is happening here, guys? So Muhammad stole this word from the Hebrew language, from the Jews, actually. He heard it from the Jews, and we are going to show you that he also heard it from someone else, and he gave that name to his Allah, right? To his moon idol, Allah. So it means mercy, compassion, or womb. If you can scroll down and continue reading, we will even catch more things. Al Rahim, Rahim means the womb. Guys, so according to, to this website, and I'm not an Hebrew speaker, I'm not a Hebrew expert, but I can do research and I when I want to find some research, I can go and ask Prophet Gul, peace be upon him. We will understand that Al Rahim is not an Arabic word, it is stolen from the Hebrew and it means the womb. So Allah is a womb. Allah is a womb. Yes, because he's Al Rahman. Al Rahim. Al Rahman Al Rahim, right? Muslims. Allah is, is Al Rahman Al Rahim. Do you see it? Al Rahim. He's Al Rahman and he's Al Rahim. That's one of his other 99 names. But Ar Rahim is the womb. So Allah is a womb. This is new to you. Abdul Halil, come on, man. You're a Hebrew speaker, bro. Bra, bra. So Allah is a, is a womb. Yes, brada. Brada, Allah is a womb. Allah is a womb. The Rahim of the God of Aisha, yeah. Allah became a womb. Yeah, good that we are still teaching you something new, guys. That's what we are all about. So Allah became the womb. Do you see it? Allah, the Rahman al-Rahim, he became a womb. And the proof is in front. Take screenshots, guys. Allah is the womb of the woman. Allah is the Rahim. Rahim. You see it? It's a Hebrew word. It's not even an Arabic word, guys. I, I kid you not. If we continue to show you how Muhammad was nothing but a copy-paste machine, he was stealing words from Jews, from other people who stole from the Jews too. There's a guy called, according, this is Ibn Kathir. Let me give you the link. 
Ibn Kathir in his tafsir for chapter 1, ayah 1. Right? If you go to Ibn Kathir's tafsir, it says, There was a guy called Musaylam al kathab you remember him guys do you know who if you don't know him uh, you know ask me give me a two if you didn't hear him about him then if you didn't you have to focus with me guys Musaylam al kathab was another prophet like Muhammad in the time of Muhammad in basically the same area in the Arabic Peninsula Muhammad commanded his army to go and kill him and attack him and you have the cannibal i kid you not there was a guy the general the cannibal general called khalid ibn walid he went to attack him and his tribe musaylam al kathab musaylam the liar yes musaylam the liar was another prophet self-proclaimed prophet like muhammad and Muhammad fought as a fake prophet of, of Allah. He fought the other guy who claimed to be also a prophet of Allah. <laughs> so we, we have two fake prophets, guys. We have two fake prophets. Fake prophet Muhammad. Fake, fake prophet Musaylama. <laughs> yeah, liar killing a liar. Exactly. So further, read with me, guys. According to Tafsir Ibn Kathir, this is not my Tafsir. This is Ibn Kathir, his Tafsir. Your Tafsir, Muslims. When Musaylama the liar, the Kathab, called himself a Rahman of Yamama. Guys, you remember the battle? Have you ever heard of battle of Yamama? Not your mama. No, no, no. no. Don't confuse it with your mama. It's Battle of Yamama. Battle of Yamama. Muhammad fought with this guy. And he, this guy was, called himself a rahman Now, do you understand where Muhammad got a rahman from? <laughs> Muhammad stole this guy's name. He stole his, this guy's name from Musaylama. He called himself a rahman al rahman of Yamama. That's what he, he used to call himself. He stole it from him and he put it in Quran. Battle of your mama. No, no, not your battle of your mama. Battle of Yamama. <laughs> you naughty Christians. So you see where Muhammad got the idea of Rahman from? From this guy who he called he's a fake prophet. Muhammad was, himself was a fake prophet. And Allah made him known, not Muhammad, but Allah made him known by the name liar and exposed him. Do you see it? <laughs> and they, the Muslims still today are calling him Musaylam al kathab Musaylam the liar. So Muhammad stole the, the poor guy's name and he put it in Quran. <laughs> I kid you not. You see it? Al-Rahman. And he even writ, wrote it... <laughs> incorrectly as we showed you you see it so when you're going to steal names of other people at least write it the correct way when you're going to steal from the jews at least write it the correct way did you catch it yeah and he was a poet exactly tippy bear he was a poet like muhammad you remember when muhammad is attacked in the quran for he's nothing but a mad poet guys muhammad in the quran is called the mad poet and these people back then they had nothing but poetry the arabs they were illiterate people living in a desert they had nothing but poetry you know they had only camels couple of goats one of them ate the quran of allah maybe cup couple of uh, you know sheep and that's it they have nothing so only thing they, they you know, they, they, to, to entertain themselves, they had only poetry, right? Poetry was a huge thing in Islam. This is why the Quran is full of poet, poetry, right? And Muhammad was accused to be a poet, like Musaylam al kathab Musaylama was another poet like Muhammad, and his name was Musaylama the Rahman of Yamama, right? 
that was his name. Do you see it? He, he was called the Rahman. Muhammad stole his name and he put it in Quran. Do you see it? So Muhammad was nothing but a copy paste machine and the proof is in front of you. Yeah, Muhammad was a storyteller, exactly. And he was accused over and over in the Quran that he was nothing but a stealer of stories. Asatir al awwalin These are nothing but the legend stories of the ones before you, according to the Quran. Muhammad is accused over and over to be nothing but a storyteller, a story that was already before Muhammad. Copy paste. Poetry book. Yeah, the Quran is nothing but a rap book. A nothing but a poetry rap book. Rapping. Muhammad was rapping in the Quran. Yo, yo, what's up, yo? Right, Muhammadans. Right. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Musaylam al kadhab was called a Rahman of Yamama. He was a storyteller like Muhammad. And Muhammad hated him. Because he called himself a prophet too, like Muhammad. And this is why Muhammad did not want any other guy to call himself a prophet except Muhammad. So he commanded Khalid ibn Walid to go and attack him with his army. And they killed him in the battle of Al Yamama. Battle of Yamama. Your mama, yes. Uh, I mean, ma Yamama, not your mama. Ma Yamama. Lord of mercy. I hope you took some notes, guys. I hope you took some notes. So Muslims, who is Allah, man? Till today, we don't know who is Allah. Only thing that we can see and we can conclude from, from our research and teaching today, that Allah is nothing but the moon idol. Allah is an illiterate moon idol who cannot even write his names correctly. Uh, the green nature. Zakir Naik says Muhammad is mentioned in Hindu, Hindu scripture. Well, that's good. Zakir Naik is helping us. Showing us that Islam is nothing but a pagan religion. Thank you, Zakir Naik. So who is Allah Muslims? Till today, we don't know who Allah is. You don't know who Allah is. Have you seen Allah? Did your prophet see Allah? We just explain to you, Mr. Abdul, and even network, you coward, you zucchini boys, you zucchini boys, we already explained to you that Allah is no one else but the moon idol with his three daughters, Allah al uzza wal manad and Muhammad bowed down to Allah al uzza wal manad right? And the devil put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for. The devil gave the satanic verses to Muhammad, and Muhammad gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh, his own tribe. These are the mighty cranes and their intercession is hoped for. Right? And he became a nice pagan mushrik boy and he did sujood together with all the Muslims. Muhammad prostrated. All the Muslim prostrates did sujood, act of worship, and all the pagans were prostrated too. They All of them became mushrikun billah. And then, as we showed you, Jibreel came to spank Muhammad. Muhammad, spank, spank, what have you done? You recited to the people that which I did not bring you from Allah. And you said what I did not say to you, says Jibreel. Spank, spank! So I think Muhammad sat on the lap of Jibreel and Jibreel was spanking him. Bam, bam, bam! What have you done, man? You gave them the satanic verses. And this part, guys, that is highlighted are the satanic verses that we can immediately find immediately find in chapter as we showed you uh, chapter 53 they used to be here immediately after this part here so the satanic verses used to be here between 20 and 21 here so this part guys this part that is highlighted was originally here. Why? We explain it why. We already explained why. Because it says the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, 
He recited it, but when he reached heavy upon Allah and Uzza wal Manad, the third, the other, so here, Muhammad came here and he finished here, then Satan put his own words here. This part, this part, the satanic verses, came immediately here after, and then Muhammad prostrated and he kept reciting. Did you catch it? The satanic verses used to be between 20 and 21, those ayahs in chapter 53. Yes, your prophet became a nice mushrik boy and he did shirk. And all the Muslims became mushrikeen together with your mushrik prophet. Yes, brother. So this is Allah, the moon idol, and he had three bird idols. They're his daughters. And he was married with the son, Akbar. Akbar was the son. We showed you in a previous live show that Akbar in the Quran is the son. The wife of the moon idol, Allah. So Allah and his wife, the son, and his three bird idols, daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Do we have any Muslim? Come on, man. My Skype is open, man. Don't be a coward. Grow a big beard, call me, grow a big beard and call me, remove the zucchini and call me live on my Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Don't forget to remove the zucchini, brother. Yes, brother. The zucchini is dangerous, brother. Yeah, and, and illustrated pictures, Mr. Anima Boy. Pictures in Islam are haram, brother. Your prophet said, it's haram, brother. So you are committing a crime against Islam, brother. You are not even a real Muslim. Yeah, Anima Boy. Anima Boy. Anima Network. You are, you are not even a real Muslim. You are a munafiq. Like your prophet. Who was a nice munafiq pagan boy. Guys, we explained to you already that Ilah, Elohim, El, Aloho, Allaha, they are nothing but a generic meaning for God. So those are generic words for God from many different languages in the Middle East. Ilahi, Elahi, Eloheinu means my God, but Allah is the name of the Islamic moon idol. And I hope you took screenshots. If not, if you just join, take a screenshot. So when Muslims tell you Allah means God, no, spank them with this screenshot. Because Allah is a name for the moon idol. And all these words, all these names here, all these words are not actually names. They are God. Even fake gods can be called Elohim, Allah, Allah, El, Ilah, right? Even fake gods like Allah. So Allah is the fake ilah Allah is the fake ilah of Islam he is the fake moon idol the fake ilah the fake god the fake ilah of the pre-islamic pagans of Quraysh did you catch it now let us focus on this word guys focus with me on the word el which means god Okay, from now on, focus on L. Okay, focus on L. I want to play a video for you. It's an Arabic video. But I'm going to try to explain and translate if you don't know Arabic. You have to put on your headset, guys. Put on your headset like me, if you have a headset. And let us watch a video. And I'm going to explain to you how the writer of the Quran makes it even more worse for Allah. We are going to explain to you that Muhammad tried to copy the Jews because El in Hebrew means God, right? This is a Hebrew word. El is a Hebrew word, it means God. Like, for example, Israel, Israel, right? Israel, El means God. Jibrail, Mikael, all these words that have El, El means God. El, right? El means God. So let me show you how Muhammad started to copy the Jews. And you're going to laugh at the end because you will see the damaging stuff in the Quran. I'm going to uncover another secret for you today. Watch. Watch, guys.
I'm going to play the video. Hope you took out your headset and put it on. You will be entertained. Illa? Illa. So Allah, guys, this Christian brother here, I'm not sure if he's, he used to be an ex-Muslim, the guy that you see here on the screen, in his TV broadcasting, this is a TV show, in his live broadcasting, and he, on his show it's called Al Dalil, right? This is a Christian network that is exposing Islam day in, day out. It's a TV show. And we're going to show you that Allah means Illa. Illa means but. What? Allah is Illa. It means but. What did you say, Rob Christian? Yes. Like, La ilaha illa Allah. But Allah. There's no Allah except, there's no God except Allah. But, so the word but, but or except, let's say it's but. So but is illa. And it's the same meaning for Allah. So Allah became a but. I kid you not. Watch. Illa but is Allah. Yeah, that's his name, he says. So the brother is saying that's his name. Uh, she's the, the, the Christian lady is asking him, are you sure? Is that his name? He says, yes, that's his name. Okay. That's the Quran. He, he says, this is not Hadith. This is not, you can't say this is Da'if. This is Quran. Guys, did you catch it? He's saying this is Quran. You cannot reject this. This is Quran. 